What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And here it is, 31 days after getting the phone, I'm finally doing the review. I want to keep this video organized. I have made some notes on things that I want to talk about. And I guess the first thing I'll talk about since I have it on the phone is the battery. The battery on this thing is not the greatest. I have all of the same apps on every phone. All of my phones are set up the same way. So uh, usually the fingerprint works much better than it did just now, but I have all of my phones set up exactly the same. I have the same apps, I have the same settings, I have everything the same. If I fully charge this at eight o'clock in the morning, I pull it off the charger, by nighttime, about nine, 10 o'clock, it's dead without touching it. So the battery on this thing is not the greatest. It does come with a fast charger and you're going to need that fast charger and I recommend having a second one or a car charger or something. You're definitely going to be plugging this in whenever you have a moment to, you know, plug it into an outlet that's nearby. The battery was at 9% this morning. I didn't charge it last night. It was at 9%. So I had this battery almost fully charged and it's now flashing letting me know that it's almost dead and my battery is now 64%. The first time I fully charged this thing and used it, I went from 60% to 100 and this light was solid, not flashing. So I still had, you know, plenty of this last bar left. So there are a lot of negative reviews on this thing on Amazon. They're very mixed, but my experience with the battery that I purchased, it's been working fine. It's been doing what it's supposed to do. And I definitely recommend getting this for your S6 because the battery is not going to make it through a whole day, especially if you're using it a lot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because it is just a battery case and I wanna do the review of the phone in its full you know, glory, not having a case on it or something. So here's the Samsung Galaxy S6. Now I just updated my camera's firmware, so it reset all my settings, I changed the white balance and exposure and stuff manually and locked it in place. So hopefully it's decent. It looks like it in the viewfinder. So just to get that out of the way, my videos are not nearly as clean as some others out there. But here we go. This is the Samsung Galaxy S6. This is the first Samsung phone in a while that I can actually say I recommend this phone. I'm just going to put it out there. If you watched my unboxing, you can tell that I was not impressed. Through the initial unboxing, later on in the video, I did say some nice things about it. But initially, I thought this was going to be a S5S or an S4S or something. Like a tiny little bit upgrade from the previous last year model, which the S5, in my opinion, was not a good phone. I definitely recommend other options instead of the S5. The S4 was better than the S3, but it wasn't amazing. And if you watch my S4 review, I said, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the first time in a while that I've been thoroughly impressed by a new device. This thing has not the tiniest hint of lag. I can open up all the apps I want to open really quick. The camera's great. I'm not one of those Oh, the color reproduction is great. It, uh, this, that, that. If you want to watch a review on the camera, this thing, watch somebody else. It takes damn good photos. That's all you really need to know or all that I can really tell you. The camera on this thing is really good. It can record 4K video. I will go through the settings, the video size. If you change it to UHD, it'll tell you that video stabilization is disabled. It will tell you all the other things in here that will not be happening. You can do 60 frames per second, which is nice, but you also lose video stabilization and other features. And then if you change it to 30 frames per second, you get video stabilization and all those other features. So this is a really good camera. Samsung has always been pretty good about cameras and, and this is no slouch. <laughs> so let's get back to where we were. I got off track. I got off topic there a little bit. I don't even honestly remember. I'm going to have to watch the recording and I'll, then I'll find out after I'm done editing the video. But anyways, this is definitely an upgrade from the S4, the S5. This is the Samsung phone you've been waiting for. I'm not going to say it's the best. This is not my favorite phone. I'm not a huge fan of TouchWiz. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. The recent apps. Okay, so let's open up Instagram. Let's open up uh, the Play Store. Let's open up. I have ADHD and it comes out in its full glory in a lot of my videos. So we'll open up Galaxy apps. We'll open up 
Uh, I don't know anything else. Uh, we're going to get to this app drawer here in just a second. Let's open up speed test. Okay, so recent apps button. Boom. Look at that. Very quick, very responsive. I can switch between apps way, way, way faster than the Note 4, way faster than the S5, way faster than any previous Samsung phone. This is what it should have been a long time ago. This is very fast and very smooth. Also, you're gonna see these little icons here. That means that that supports multi-view, so you can have two apps open at the same time. You can switch between them. Now, I'm not an expert at this, to be honest. This is more of a cool feature than it is something that I get used to and that I have to have on my phones. If you're used to Samsung phones and you're used to multi-view, then this is something you'll be used to. There's a way to drag it down and also rearrange it and do other stuff with it, move it around. But you can add more apps than just this. This goes into much more detail than I can explain to you. This is honestly a feature that I never use. And in fact, I usually turn multi-view off. So if you're someone that uses this, you're going to love this. You can have multiple apps open and you can change full screen. You can make it a little bitty tiny bubble. And let's do that with uh, something else here. Is there any other apps that will support that? All right, Twitter goes real small. Let's see if we can make that into a little bubble. There we go. We have two little bubbles here, and we can go ahead and launch the Play Store or launch Twitter, and we can interact with these independently from one another. So this is actually pretty cool. This is a feature I should use more often, but I just can't bring myself to get used to something. And then if I switch to my Nexus or any other phone, I don't have this feature, and I don't want to get used to something that I can't have on another device, if you understand what I'm saying. And then I can just make it full screen and then go here and make it full screen. Or you can click the little button and close it out. So it's really cool, to, but it's a feature I don't really use. And you can also hit close all. Bam. So this is definitely the fastest Samsung TouchWiz device I've used. And I definitely like it. I definitely enjoy using it. And I cannot say don't get this phone. I can't say that. This is a great phone. It's a great phone, and if you're used to Samsung phones and Samsung's U TouchWiz UI, then you should definitely consider this phone over all the other players out there right now because you'll be in familiar territory. You'll know how things work and where things are. D I definitely recommend this phone. I want to go back to the battery real quick. One thing is, is I do have the HTC One M9. If I fully charge both of these phones and I unplug this one and the M9 at the same time, this phone will be completely dead, while my HTC One usually has about 50 to 60% battery life left, and that's without touching either of those. I honestly don't use my phone nearly as much as I used to in the past, so I could go all day without touching this phone, because usually I'll end up using my LG G3, which has CyanogenMod on it, or I'll use my tablet or something, and these phones will just sit here all day until I get a phone call or a text message or something, or until I leave the apartment. And my phone will die and my One M9 will have 50 to 60% battery life left day after day. I could fully charge both of these, unplug them, and then tomorrow when this one's dead, since it's new now, actually maybe midnight tonight or early in the morning, this thing will die and my One M9 will still have 50 to 60% battery life left. So the battery on this thing is its biggest, I mean its biggest downfall. If you're looking for a phone that's going to last you a while, this isn't it. This is not it. Now, I also want to say Samsung could very well put out updates that make the battery life even better in the future. I believe that they can. I believe that they will if they get enough complaints from people that want longer lasting battery life. Or maybe they can't. I don't know. I've also noticed that with some really good usage, I've also noticed while installing apps, playing games like <laughs> stupid addicting game Goat Simulator, this phone can get quite warm and the battery will just plummet you will start playing goat simulator 20 30 minutes later you've got 60 percent battery life left it will get pretty warm and will plummet pretty fast i'm gonna try not to dig on this battery too much again that's its biggest downfall the rest of the phone is absolutely wonderful and if you have a samsung quick charger it will not take that long about an hour's time to fully charge the battery from empty to full so if it's not empty it's going to take less time than that one thing I want to talk about real quick is the fact that this does not have a micro SD card. Now, for people like me, that's not a big deal. It's not a deal breaker. If you watch my expandable removable storage options for the Galaxy S6 video, which I will link to in this video's description, so you'll have to click the little text that says show more 
to expand the description and see all the links. But essentially, you plug this in your computer, you transfer the files to this, and when it's done, you just unplug it, you stick it in the bottom of your phone, and now you have 32 gigs, 64 gigs, 128 gig, which I have in there right now, or Samsung's new 200 gig micro SD card. So you got this little bitty tiny guy sticking out of the bottom, and you can throw some 1080p super high quality videos on there. You could throw a million pictures, a buttload of songs. You can store whatever you want. And when you're done, just remove it and it's out of the way. So yes, it would have been nice. I definitely wish they would have put a micro SD card in there, but it's not the end of the world. You do have other options. And I made a video going over all of those options with removable expandable storage. And you'll have to watch that video if you have not seen it to see for yourself. Not having a micro SD card is not in the world and it's not a reason to go, oh, I'm not gonna get this phone, I'm gonna get this phone instead. I would care more about the battery life than I would micro SD card. One thing I wanna talk about real quick is that fingerprint scanner. Unlike the Note, it doesn't require you to swipe your finger down, you actually hold your finger in place for one to two seconds and it works. Now, I did sometimes feel that it is faster to just go boom like that and it's over because you actually have to hold your finger down until it unlocks and sometimes it'll just vibrate like say this it's not a match i have to put my finger on there better and it takes time and if you mess it up it takes a little bit more time to get it right see like you have to actually put your finger down like see i even had it right there that time there we go now it's unlocked on the note i did feel that swiping down was a little bit faster than waiting a second for it to unlock that's just something i've noticed it is nicer that you can just put your finger on it and not have to swipe it but i felt like swiping did unlock my phone a little bit faster let's talk about the app drawer for just a second let's talk about the app drawer so Sa samsung has these things where they're little folders and that's cool you can do that you can that's been a feature since freaking ice cream sandwich i believe it's really cool but okay so my apps are in alphabetical order because i set them to be in alphabetical order i installed a new app because my daughter was bored and she wanted to play a new game archery master 3d you can also see goat simulator those apps are at the very very back i'll hit a to z I hit OK, and now it'll throw it up the front. If I go and install a brand new app called, I don't know, <laughs> Minecraft. Yeah, if I install Minecraft, it's going to put it right here on this very last spot. And then I'm going to have to sort it again. I had to sort it every time I install a new app if I want them all in alphabetical order. Yes, that can be resolved with installing Nova Launcher or some third-party launcher for Android but it's just something I've noticed and it got a little bit annoying. If I press A to Z, I want them all to be in A to Z every time. You can also hit this edit button here and you can remove apps really quickly by simply tapping the minus button. So we'll go ahead and uninstall Zedge. Boom, it's gone, it's not there anymore. It's very fast, very effective, so much better than going to settings, applications, downloaded, <laughs> and finding that one and removing it. So much faster and so much more convenient. And that, ladies and gentlemen, about covers my review and my most important thoughts on the Galaxy S6. Now, as far as the Galaxy S6 Edge, I don't have money to burn. <laughs> Coming up with $700 for a phone, it's quite a bit of money. And then buying an S6 Edge, which is like eight or $900, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I had to plan these purchases out in advance and I have to make them wisely. So if you wanna see a video on the S6 Edge, go to Zenomax. Go to Marquez, go to somebody who has money to burn and can afford to buy the same phone on different carriers or the S6 Edge, the S6 Edge Plus, the S6 This, and have them all in one video. I do not have the Edge. I would like to have the Edge, and I would probably like the Edge more than this just because it is side to side and it just seems like a really cool concept to me. So if you have the extra money to get the S6 Edge, go for it. I really like this phone. I do. I could tell anybody out there this would be a great phone to use every day. Just make sure that you have a battery case nearby or a battery bank. I've done many, many, many of those videos. I would recommend getting one by Anchor or Zero Lemon. They're both really good companies that make some really good batteries. This case is a solid option. I will have a link to my video in the description. It's brought my battery from 60% to 100. It's brought it from 9% to 64%. It does a pretty good job at giving you that extra battery life. And you can charge this thing up and keep it in your car. You don't have to have it on your phone all the time. TouchWiz is way better 
than it ever has been before. This phone is faster than the Note 4. This is Samsung's best phone. I'm not going to say anything more than that. I recommend this phone if you're used to coming from Samsung devices. I definitely prefer AOSP, and if there was a Google Play version of this phone, I would totally get it in a heartbeat instead of the TouchWiz field one. But TouchWiz is so, so much better than it ever has been before. And I've had this phone for 31 days. I haven't reset it. I haven't reset it. I haven't done anything to it. Everything's the same way it's been since the first day with new apps added daily with things being changed and I haven't had any issues with it. And that wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by clicking the thumbs up button to the bottom right of the video player if you're viewing this on your computer. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you like my videos and you want to stay in touch with me. If you want to see what videos are coming out next, it auto-tweets when a new video is posted. So sometimes you'll catch the video on Twitter before you do on YouTube. I'll have a link to my social media accounts in the description below. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new here. If that button's red, that means you haven't pressed it yet and you will not get notified of future videos that I post of the S6, the 1M9, the Nexus 6, <laughs> and other future phones. This is What Would Josh Do, and I'm out.